Today, I've got a super special treat for you. We have found a way to hack stems, the multi-audio format from Native Instruments that gives you drums, bass, vocals, and other parts from a song. We're gonna show you today how to break those parts apart using a free piece of software, put them in the DAW of your choice, and create some very interesting custom instrumentals for your DJ sets, regardless of the software or hardware that you're using. Here are the steps you need to follow to break down stems and start to get into the different parts. First, we need to install the right software. You're gonna need two pieces of software. Number one, Audacity. This is a free audio editor for both Mac and Windows. You can go ahead and get it for free here or in a link in our article, which is underneath me. The second piece you're gonna need is something called FFmpeg, which is a video encoder that's also free. The link is underneath us in the article. You're gonna get direct links to free downloads for that as well. First, let's go into Audacity and make sure that that FFmpeg encoder is installed. You go to Preferences, you go to Libraries, FFmpeg Library, Locate, and go ahead and navigate to the download that you got from us. Now we've got Audacity up, running, we've got our MPEG, uh, library which allows Audacity to read this stems file. Now let's import these stem files into Audacity and isolate them. Here I've got a stem file here. Uh, you can see it's got a .mp4 ending and it's pretty large, 40 megabytes. If we play it, we're gonna hear the track. We could load it into Tractor, we could load it into iTunes, we could load it into anything and all we've got is the full track. No matter what you do to this file, there's no way to kind of get in, crawl in and pull out just the base unless you follow the following steps. Let's go ahead and import audio in Audacity. Go ahead and select the stem that you want. Now you're gonna to wanna to select the streams that you wanna import. Uh, you can't really see them, but you can see that I can click through them. There's five. So I'm gonna select all streams, hit okay. Now the five streams are the stereo mix, and the four isolated parts of the song, whatever that producer decided to isolate. Bass, drums, maybe some synths, and if you're lucky, maybe some vocals as well. You can just import the bottom four, but it's probably easier to import all five and then just ignore the stereo mix. Audacity's now finished importing all the files and we can see them inside the program. There's five different stereo waveforms. We've got the stereo bus here, um, that's the whole mix, everything together, and then you can see the individual isolated parts. Let's get them out of Audacity though and into our DAW. So we'll go to export multiple, and here we'll probably do numbering after file, and I recommend that you do an AIF or WAV format export. An MP3 would re-encode what was already encoded as an MP3, going through that process twice. So let's keep it as AIFF or WAV, whatever you prefer, not a big difference between the two. Don't really need to edit metadata, and I'm gonna go ahead and put them in my folder. It's exporting all those files, and if we go over to that folder, we'll see that I'm starting to see files here. In the end, I've got five files, four isolated ones and one that is the stereo mix. Let's go ahead and pull those into Ableton or whatever your DAW of choice is, because that's where we want to make our edits. If you're using Ableton, super handy trick, just hit Command, and it's going to put those into individual audio files for you. Nice and easy, they're all lined up, they're ready to go. If you don't have Ableton already set to not warp large files like this, that the files are not warped, definitely do not want to warp them. It also would have been handy to have known what the BPM of the track was in advance. I know that this track is 120, so I'll go ahead and change my session to 120, and then I'll grab all the files and just line them up to the beat. I found this is the easiest and fastest instead of dealing with warping and, and all that stuff, just set the session to the same tempo, move it over until the kick is right at the downbeat. You can maybe throw on the metronome and check that real quick. Easy peasy, done. Now the reason I do that is very simple. Personally, I've been taking the drums out of these mixes, which is super fun because then I have a instrumental. But if you take the drums out, it's really hard to tell where the downbeat is. So what I recommend that you do is take just a little chunk of the beat, copy it over to before the beginning of the song. So here's the beginning. 
And so I've basically created a little bit of a beat intro. Now I'm going to delete the drums. And what it gives me is a little drum intro. And then it's going to go straight into the one. Now when I pull that into Tractor or into um, Record Box or whatever you mix in, that not only makes it easier for the software to beat grid this instrumental that you created, but it's really obvious where the downbeat and the beginning of your instrumental is. Whereas if there were no drums, it could get a little bit tricky. One thing about these stems is that there is, of course, no mastering of any kind. Um, these are pretty raw files, and playing them out, sometimes they can sound a little flat. So one thing you may want to consider doing, since you've already got a DAW up, is maybe throw on a mastering plugin, something like Ozone from Isotope, which is a pretty, pretty awesome, simple mastering tool. Just to get the volumes up, this is completely optional. You're now going into the territory of, of changing the track to fit you know, your personal sound. Um, but let's go ahead and do a basic stereo enhance. Here it is with that off. And with it on. So that made the track super wide, which you may or may not want, um, but put any uh, mastering on there that you'd like. One important thing, very important thing we did not do is delete this fifth audio file here, which is the stereo mix. That's why we're hearing the drums. So right now, if we solo this guy up, there's the full track. These are all the different parts. And here are the individual parts. So obviously make sure you delete that fifth stereo track. So now this leaves us with only three parts and a little drum intro. So I'm going to select everything, including that drum intro, and then I'll do an export. I'll probably export this as a WAV file and keep it as a WAV file, not re-encoding it once again as an MP3. Again, that two stages of lossless um, action going there. So we just call this truncate custom stem, let's call it that. And I'm going to put in the BPM in the um, title to make it easy. So when I drag it into my software, I can punch in that BPM and make it really easy to process. So that's pretty much it. It's very simple. It's all free. All the links that you need to do this are underneath me uh, in the article that we've got on this topic on djtechtools.com. There's probably some other ways to do this. We've looked into a lot. This seems to be the most simple and reliable. But if you have a better methodology and you've got some suggestions that we might have missed, please tell us in the comments on djtechtools.com.